Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll uh, take a look at how to do some date functions in Excel. So to just to get started, um, let's say we just want to get today's date. I can say today and it'll give me today's date. And um, so you can use this today function for that. Now, supposing you want to see what exactly this looks like to Excel, you can just change the format here to a number and uh, it's actually this number. So every date has a corresponding number. So let's, uh, you know, I'm just going to take this date and subtract it, subtract, uh, let's say 10 from it um, and keep doing this. And we generate a few numbers and you can actually, uh, I'm just going to copy this as well here, just to show you what these numbers will be when they're converted to dates. So if you take these numbers and you change the format to back to a date, you can see that you will see the corresponding dates. So these are all like dates that are 10 days uh, apart that we just generated. So here's a number, here's a corresponding date. So um, there are other formats possible. So I could just copy this here and I can just copy this all the way down and I can go to date over here and for example, have a long format. So this way it will give me the day, the, uh, the day of the week as well as the date. And there are other formats also you can uh, change this to. So for example, you can go, go to more number formats. You can go to date and there's a whole bunch of, uh, and there's a whole bunch of uh, date related formats here that you can choose from. This sort of number is called serial format and this is a date format. So you can go back and forth from serial format to date format. Now sometimes, you might find that a date, it, it looks like a date, but it's probably a string. So let's just take uh, 6 15, 2021. But I just put a little um, single quote sign right at the beginning here. And that is to tell Excel that this string is like, uh, this uh, data that I've entered is actually a string and not a, a proper date. So if you take a look at this, uh, you can't, for example, you could not, uh, you, you cannot change the format if you change the format uh, to a number, it's not going to change because it's in the text format to begin with. So if you have a string like this, if you want to convert this to a proper date format so that you can do date arithmetic and other things with it, then you can use the date value function, date value, and you can give it this date text, and then it will convert that to the date number, which then you can convert to a proper format to get the proper date. Now you have all these dates. Um, is it possible to extract the month, the year, the day and the, you know, the weekday and so on. So let's see how to do that. So let's see how to extract the month. So I'm just going to say month here equals month and you can just give it this date and it'll give you the month number. You can say year and for that year, you can just say year and then you can enter the date. Um, it'll give you the year and you can say day for day. You can say equals day and you can give it this particular value and it'll give you the day. You can also have weekday. You can have weekday here. So equals weekday and you can give it this value here. So it's the third day of the week. So let me just copy these values all the way down here. Um, so for example, Sunday is number one, weekday number one. And so Monday would be two, um, Tuesday would be three and so on. Now, if you are given these kinds of numbers, is it possible to com combine all of it back into a proper date? So, so I'm just gonna call this recombine. And can you, re can you recombine this into a date? Yes, you can. You can use the date function and you can give it the year, month and day. So I'm going to give it the year, comma, month, comma, day. And it will take those numbers and convert them back to a proper date. So there you have your proper date. Now, supposing you want to take a particular date and um, try to get a date that is some so many days before or after. So let's just take after, for example. So I'm just going to call this five days after. Okay, so let's just call it that. So all I can do is I can just take this and add plus five to it. And it will be five days after that particular date. 
but sometimes you want to do this sort of five days after uh, not just any days but five working days so for that you need to use a special formula so I'm just going to say five working days um, so I can basically say work day work day and then I can take my start day and count the number of days so that will give me uh, it will give me a number but I can always change it to the proper format to get my date so and I can just copy this all the way down and you can see that there's a small difference here so you can get so many days before or after um, you could for example if you want it to be five days before you can just say minus five and it'll give you the previous values so if you put a minus value here it'll give you the previous five days before five working days before if you put plus value it'll give you five working days after if you want the days between any two dates you can also get that so for example i'm going to say days between not just any days but working days but first we'll do just days between so if you just take days between let's say this my you can just uh, subtract uh, you can just subtract let's say this minus this it should give you the number of uh, days between any two dates so I can just copy this all the way what if you want not just the days between but working days between so working days between so for that you can use the net working days for formula so you can say net working days and you can take the start date and you can take the end date and it will give you the number of working days excluding the weekends and so on so there it is so that way you can get the net working days between any two dates you can also get a sense for how many months weeks and days have elapsed between any two dates okay let's say month between okay so months between so I can say date diff the date diff difference between the two dates the start date comma end date comma number of uh, months I'm just going to say M here for months so zero months because they're all in the same uh, month now so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put a, a dollar between the K and the 5 here so that when I copy this down I do not change the K so the start uh, so the end date remains the same and the start date keeps changing so I just keep it that way and I copy this formula all the way down uh, sorry and when I do that you can see that the moment I switch from June to May so now the difference between May uh, June 20th and May 19th is one month so here I had said M so that stands for month so if I want to know how many months have elapsed I can do it this way so that's it for now I hope uh, you found this useful thanks for watching